You're listening to RTI Audio, powered by Rocky Top Insider. This is Pancakes and Bacon with BFL, Tyler Kerbison, and Reed Bacon. Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Pancakes and Bacon. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Kerberson. Join us, Reed Bacon. I uh, have another amazing podcast for you. Uh, so we're just talking basketball, all basketball, headed into the SEC tournament. We're talking about the South Carolina and the Kentucky games, what that showed us, what that means to us, what are our vibes going into this SEC tourney? And then we talk about it as a whole, what the bracket looks like, who we're going to be playing, what needs to happen for us to win. Um, so we're just breaking down all basketball before madness breaks out. So um, good podcast. But first, before we get into any of that, Reed, how are we doing, bud? Yellow. Yellow. What are you doing, big boy? Look at me. So I know this isn't the exact one because I bought this uh, like a year or two ago. It's actually, I think, what they consider like their goth apparel. But I kind of, you yeah, know, it's them, like them chesticles are looking good. Oh, God, don't talk dirty to me. Oh, talk yeah. dirty to you. No, what I was going to say is this is like my basketball coach uh, get up. They, <laughs> yeah. they all wear they all wear these, but they're like the different style. But this one, sorry, I spilled some water here. but. Um, yeah, I got. I wore this to get in. Well, actually, I just wore it for work today. But uh, <laughs> you're just trying to get, get in the mindset. Just yeah, basketball, basketball yeah. season. Yes. So right. anyway, anyway, I'm doing well. Uh, how are you? I'm I'm great. Uh, it's been it's been a good week. Um, still trying to catch up on my golf game now that the weather's getting a little bit better. Uh, still hitting like shit but hey we're we're figuring we're figuring it out um daylight savings is literally one of the my favorite times of the year um when it happens and it's you know still bright outside right now uh in central time zone at 5 45 or whatever time it is uh it's beautiful i love it i love every minute of it uh it it gets very depressing in the winter. Let's say that. I love Central Time. We've talked about it multiple times. Uh, Central Time is great for many reasons. Yeah. When I lived there and I would walk out of the office at 4.30, 4.45, 5, 5.15, and it is just straight dark. It's like, what are we doing here? It's tough. It is tough. It is it is T U F F tough, tough, tough. Um, but anyways, no, I, I agree. It's it's a good fun time of year. No offense to January and February, but once the NFL is over rocks. with <laughs> Yeah, once once J, once uh NFL and college football are over with, I'm like, get me to March. Seriously, get get me to March. But yeah, no anyways, kidding. I do wanna I do wanna talk. So basketball, we have season finale there. And that is both games that we had. So the South Carolina game on the road and then the senior night Kentucky game that we had at uh, Thompson Bowling Arena at Food City Center. Bam! Mm. <laughs> so Man, this, guy, this guy knows ball. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let, let me say this, starting with South Carolina. Then I'll hear your South Carolina, and then we'll move to Kentucky. You go ahead. Um, very impressive. Very impressive to go on the road. In a hostile environment, yeah. Tennessee, it, it, Tennessee is that team that we get everyone's best from the atmosphere to the team, and just we've had that a couple times before. Uh, well, yeah, times. and I know that multiple. I know that you I know that you felt like we we're going to lose Alabama, but as soon as we won that, I'm sure that feeling kind of transferred to South Carolina being an away game again. I felt I felt better. I felt better about this one um, that we would win, and, and they did. But yes, but yes, I, I you, you were not far off. There are times where that could have easily had continued my trajectory. Mm-hmm. But I felt I felt good going into the South Carolina game. 
I loved how I loved how we started. I mean, you literally start the game. First bucket of the game is Dalton going right at somebody's chest, getting a nice little layup, which is great. I loved seeing uh, my man Jonas Adu getting some work there. I was very impressed with Tennessee's defense. Uh, our biggest fan, Jimmy Dykes, made a comment about you know second half seven five six seven eight minutes ago how we've held south carolina into the 50s and i was like holy crap i didn't even notice that but yeah like that that is super impressive and my favorite two of my favorite things about that game uh were every time south and they got close like i mean it, it was almost one of those games that we've played in football games or whatever where you're just beating them and it's kind of like we know we're gonna win but you can't mm-hmm. let up on the foot. You can't you can't let the foot off the gas. There's like six, seven minutes to go, and you're up 10, 15, 20. You know, you're up a couple touchdowns, and that other team doesn't stop fighting. And then Tennessee has a, a you know, five-minute lapse where they don't score. And it's like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, this team's getting back in it. And yeah. what was so great about this game is Tennessee answered every time they needed to. In, in very clutch. They needed a bucket, right? they got it. Exactly. And it was very impressive. It was very clutch. So that was one thing I love to see. There was a couple sick plays in this game where I was pumped with some of the offense. One of my favorite plays of the entire game was – it was later, uh, four or five minutes ago in the second half. They run a screen. Uh, Santi comes up, gets it. Then some someone sets him a screen to get open, coming up to the top of the key on the right – well, kind of right wing, top of the key. Uh, he gets it, and then Jonas comes, and they do a pick and pop pick and roll and it was filthy i don't know if you remember but he picks and then 80 rolls and they throw the oop and it's like oh mm-hmm. i love that like love that love yeah. that love that and then to finish it off the last thing i'll say for south carolina the south carolina game is and i have it here it's um so let's see it's like a minute 30 um i believe and well, it's maybe two minutes, minute thirty, whatever. And it's get the ball, get the ball to Dalton. He's on the yeah. right wing. <laughs> I wrote down like, are you talking about before the half? No, I'm talking about yeah. at the end of the game. We oh. they they've got yeah. Here it is. It's it's fifty seven to fifty. They're kind of hitting a couple of those shots. Coming back two minutes and seventeen seconds to go in the game. They get Dalton the ball with thirteen seconds to go on the shot clock. Everyone just clears out. And it's this is this is what we've talked about, but it's so nice to see it. Like I was kind of saying at the beginning, we've been this team multiple times because Rick Barnes has had some good teams, some some darn mm-hmm. good teams since he's been here. Bruce Pearl's had some really good teams, so we've been the high ranked team and getting everyone's best shot when we show up. Mm-hmm. And like we've talked about multiple times before, we we have had good, really, really good players. We had, you know, multiple good players, but then we had some great college basketball players like, a you know, most recently like Grant Williams. But to be able to hand this man the ball and watch him just go to work, that is so effortless. One step, dribble, dribble, comes in, has he, dribble, dribble, backs the guy down, gets right in front of the free throw line and just elevates. And it's just, if if they had double teamed him, he could have kicked it right out. They don't yeah. double team, and he gets that shot, and you just you just sit back and you say, "How easy is this? How fun is this? How fun is this? How fun is that?" So, so that was that was kind of my thing, and then you you extend it to a nine point game with two minutes to go, and and I know it's a South dagger. Carolina. It's a dagger. Yeah, it's, No, it is. It is. And South Carolina hit some shots. I mean, it, you know, the, I forget the one individual that they have on their team who's a ball player, um, the guard, but in, I loved how he attacked and they hit some shots. So they, they kept coming, yeah. but just something like that. That's like, and it will then talk about it when we get to the Kentucky game, but I want you to let you have your, your time to talk South Carolina, but that was, uh, it's very refreshing. It's very nice. And, um, I think just the, yeah. the, the ease of it is what's so nice. Yeah, that's true. I, I you know, had that um, battered vol syndrome kind of going into the game of here's the away game that we're going to lose. Uh, but, you know, once we got into it and we're playing that good defense, like you said, and, you know, right there before the half, like we were still close. And then in Dalton just hit like three threes in a row right before half. 
And it was just like, oh, this is stupid. I uh, just just walks down wet. Like net doesn't even move on his third one. It goes in without the net moving. I'm like, this guy is ridiculous. Uh yeah. that inbounds play from Ziegler to Dalton was awesome. Just yeah. absolutely love that. Love to see it. Shout I out. love some of Ziegler's passes that I've been seeing recently. His bounce passes to AD on some of those picks. Like, man, what a point guard. I lo- like Oh, you're right. I forgot about on one of the on in the South Carolina game later yeah. in the game. We had the entry pass down there to Jonas. Made me a little scared because you put the ball on the ground, didn't keep it up high, but he still executed. And I just forgot. Double Z. Dude, I'm telling I'm telling you, I, I don't think enough people use bounce passes anymore. Like, no, I like agree. everyone I tries agree. to use it like a chest pass or like direct pass. And that's where everybody's arms are. That's where that's easy pickings to swat a ball away. Um dude, so I love Ziegler. I mean Kyler. What is not Kyler. to love about the guy? We forgot to mention Double Z winning SEC Defensive Player of the Year, a guy who's five nine. But no, I was gonna, it. I was gonna bring it up when we were talking about the SEC tourney, like him, Defensive Player of the Year, Dalton, Offensive Player of the Year. And, and the thing, I mean, off, Offensive Player of the Year, that's really cool. But uh, he's also like a six six, just athletic stroker. But the fact that yeah. we have a five nine. Just absolute New York street rat getting after people. I mean, if you don't like if you don't like the way the double Z plays basketball, then you don't like anything about sports. Like you can't appreciate sports because that guy embodies just everything that there is about, you know, grit, determination. Yeah. And he's not, and he's not just like this like Cinderella story. I mean, the guy's a player. And but but the fact that a five nine guard one defensive player of the year is so freaking cool so cool yeah if if, if you don't like the way Ziegler plays and you can leave like I don't want to I don't want to know you yeah you know yeah I mean? seriously like, you're not my friend it, I um, mean yeah but I yeah just love Ziegler the way he plays Dalton hitting those threes I just watching it Rewatching it, South Carolina, after watching Kentucky, because – and I'll, I'll transition into Kentucky with this. But watching Kentucky and feeling like, man, there's open threes. Like, I'm seeing these open threes. I'm like, a team like Kentucky, knowing the way that they shoot, knowing that they want those threes, it's like, dude, y'all, you can't – you cannot try and help down inside. You can't try and like go towards the paint and and help your defender with a with you know with a driving guy. Like they're gonna kick it, they're gonna shoot it. That's what they are trying to do. And then I watched it versus South Carolina, and I'm like, oh, they're doing the exact same thing versus South Carolina, but they can't make threes. South uh-huh. Carolina wasn't hitting their threes. They were open, but they weren't hitting them because they don't got shooters like Kentucky does. Right. So it really just opens up like hey, you got to play different teams in different ways. You can let South Carolina shoot those threes, but you cannot do that again versus Kentucky and expect to win. Like uh, You know, g- g- great point and segue in. I was very impressed. I I, I hate losing Kentucky. I never want to lose to Kentucky. I don't want to lose to anyone. It's just it's no. just the way it is. But this game really yeah. didn't. This game really didn't like put me in a bad mood. It, it truly didn't. I well, I hey, mean, listen, SEC's locked up. Kentucky needed this game to be a decent seed in the SEC tournament. So it's just like, okay, and it's cool. It's one of my favorite quotes in sports. It's cliche. I say it all the time, but it's so true. It's. Uh, the desperate team, the more desperate team usually wins. Hung, hung, mm-hmm. You know, the 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 one of the quotes or cliche quotes is, you know, hungry dog runs faster. And you That's really right. can't fake that. De- you cannot fake desperation. And I was very impressed. Like, I think this is a way to put it. I hate losing to them, but when I lose to someone, I'm like, wow, they, I'm impressed. You know, great defense. You hit your shots. And, and, mm-hmm. and maybe there's not a guy on their team that's – running his mouth and annoying me or anything like that. Maybe that's sometimes just the camera doing that. They're not showing some loser that frustrates me, but, 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 but from the start, I said, man, I said, Kentucky is very impressive on D. I thought their guards defensively frustrated our guards. 
Then mm-hmm. when we got inside, we could not finish, whether it was the five blocks. Granted, I know they, we had five blocks in the first half, but still I felt like they swarmed us up top. If we did beat someone, we could not finish either because of the blocks or we tried to pass it out. There yeah. was probably three, four, five times where we have you beat your guy, you get to the lane, finish the layup. Don't always try to kick out. Don't always try to kick out. That's not the better play all the time. And so I was very impressed with Kentucky. And then the other thing is, too, it's basketball. If you're hitting your shots, you're really tough to beat. And they had two guys that were close to 30 points. Now we have the better, the best player on the on the court with Dalton Connect, but Dalton dropping forty at home, he can't do it himself. If you no. if you if you lose while Dalton Connect is scoring forty points at home, then I can tell you right now that Santi, Triple J, and potentially Double Z or Adu did not play the way they need to play. And unfortunately, on Senior Day, Santi and Triple J did not play the way they need to play. I'll give Triple J credit. He had some nice clutch free throws against South Carolina. He made his clutch free throws down late against Kentucky. He did. He had the chip, you know. It's tough that he had the three to tie the game. You want the ball to go to Dalton. I get we were going to go to Dalton. Dalton slips. People then kind of start panicking. Triple J had a shot. He had a look at it. Would have made for a great senior day moment. Mm-hmm. But, but before we get to the end of the game, I just was very impressed with Kentucky. Coach Cal's getting those boys playing right at the, the you know at the right time of the year. But it didn't yeah. bother me that we didn't it didn't like upset me that we lost. I said, yeah, good game. Like kudos, shake your hand to them, yeah. keep it moving. No, I mean I think I think Kentucky is a really good team. Like in no way, shape, or form was I like, oh, we lost to a shitty Kentucky. It's like no, this is a good Kentucky team. Um. They're making their shots. I mean, those guys were shooting lights out every opportunity they got. Like I said earlier, leaving them open for threes is not the way to win versus Kentucky. Let them drop, like guard them, but let them drive. I want them inside the paint. That that when I watch, I'm just like, please come to the paint and try and score in there. That's where I want you to try and be scored. I don't want you shooting the threes because you're hitting all of them. Buddy was seven for nine at one point, uh, the uh, Spencer kid or whatever his name is. Um, uh, Shepard. Yeah, Shepard, Shepard. Yeah. I mean, it was wild watching him shoot. I'm like, holy crap. Uh, like, he can't miss. He literally could not miss. It was crazy. Um, so, but I, I mean, I'm honestly, I'm honestly like, if we play defense in a smarter way, we can beat this team. Uh, we were one possession away from tying the game uh, before the final seconds and our best player slipped. It's like, you, like we weren't even in the game with 40 seconds left. Like Kentucky thought the game was over at that point, And we still fought our way back. We caused a turnover on the inbounds. Ziegler's chasing after the ball. He gets a quick bucket, like well, on, just effort, get, effort, before, effort that I absolutely before. love. Before you get there, before you get there, because I, I have the the chronological order here. But are you a little preview here for the SEC mm. tournament? So don't go all the way in. Are you worried to play Kentucky again? Yes. Yes. I won't all right, go all I'll, the way I'll in. I'll, I'll ask you. I'll ask you another question. I'll ask you another question as we go. So, anyways, I have it lined up here. So you got the ZZ3, I think it was at like 50. I just changed it, but it that was at like fit the – well, give me one second, actually, because I just had it, and then I switched videos. What a uh, noob. Think, yeah, I know. I'm noob. But, but I think it's important to say it uh, correctly. Yeah, so so they hit the free throw. Z gets down there and hits it at 50 – two seconds, which was a massively clutch three. Now, the funny thing is about this, Kyler. I watched this entire game, I, and then I caught the last little bit on radio uh-huh. because I was driving somewhere. So I'm locked in. I'm listening. And of course, I'm like, you know, Thompson Bowling Arena, you can see on here people are starting to clear out, which is a little bit of a bummer. But I get it. I get it. I get it. I might have been doing the same thing. I think the only I thing that maybe – I get it. I, what's that? 
I said I wouldn't have, but I get it. No, you would. You would not have. You would not. I might have been, which is not not good. To, but I, I'll be honest. I will say when we started making that comeback, I can promise you if I'd been there, I'd been up on my feet going bananas, and I can see quite a bit of people here still sitting down, not getting behind mm-hmm. the boys. But anyways, you hit that at 50 seconds, and then you get Reed Shepard who slips. You get the turnover. You get the and one. Okay. Then you get the next turnover, and 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 um, and – Triple J has his clutch free throws. Mm-hmm. And then two turnovers, that's one thing. But to hold them on a 10-second call, I mean. That's tough, wild. Wild. Well, I get someone <laughs> slipping. I get you 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 pressing and, and freaking someone out and getting another turnover. But the 10 seconds is one of the most, like, awesome, impressive, funny things. I'm driving down the car like, no way. And I'm cracking up. I'm like, let's go. I was like, dude, these dudes yeah. are, are – You, you didn't even get a chance to see it. I like, No, not – I'm watching it. I'm watching it just going like in my head like seven, eight, nine. I'm like, dude, we're going to get this. We're going to get this. Come on. Come on. Like that kind of fight and finish towards the end, obviously there's a slip. Like can't – like you didn't do much to do that, but pressing them, getting up in their faces, making them uncomfortable – but be getting the loose ball, getting the loose yeah. ball. Yeah, and going up quick. I mean, Ziegler scored two seconds after that ball hit the ground. Like, it was immediate. And then a continued fight, clutch free throws by Triple J. It's It reminds me of what we grew up on in the Bruce Pearl era of him being like, oh, we're pressing him 95 feet. Like. Yeah. They're going to deal with us the whole way. And that was – I absolutely loved that out of a team. It just showed, like, all this fight and aggression in it. And I'm like, that's how – that's how me as a football player would play basketball. <laughs> like, I'm up in your face. I mean, a 8-0 run in 29 seconds. Yeah. Eight points in 29 seconds. Trace McGrady, Reggie Miller style. And and just the, the no fight. I mean, I mean the, the no give up and fighting like that, and almost stealing one would have been hilarious. I oh honestly my. wouldn't even been excited. I would have just been laughing at Kentucky and like enjoying it. So hurt. Oh, it would have been it would have been unbelievable. It would have been oh, it would have been God. unbelievable. But just that whole that whole was was hilarious. But as I've already mentioned, it did not upset me. I don't know if it upset you in 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 that way, or if you were more of a tip to the cap. Uh more of a tip to the cap because I was getting upset with the open threes for sure. Was just like quit helping on defense and stay on your freaking man because they're trying to set it up. Like that's what they're doing. Please don't. Like when I see things of like that. Listen, I don't know fucking basketball. I know I don't admit to no basketball. I'm a football player. But by God, I can see why a guy is wide open. I can tell why he's wide open. Um, and yeah, I'm, that, that annoyed me. But overall, I'm like, listen, you make 45% of your threes. Like, okay, that makes sense. You're going to be up on us. You're going to beat us. Did we fight our way back? Was it a close game in the end? Yeah, it was. They came away with it. Not upset. Still have the SEC championship regular season. Still a better team. Still a better seed than Kentucky. It's it's fine. Love it, actually, because I think we're going to be playing them again in the SEC tournament, and it's the last time we played. So it's like, here's – Hey, get your experience in because that was a play. That was a play in game for Kentucky. So they were giving it all they had, right? They're they're showing you what you what they got. So now we know. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that if it had been like if we played really bad, like a bad performance, got blown out, I would have been frustrated. Or um, if we didn't show the fight like we did at the end. Um, I would have maybe been frustrated, like I said, if something that what Kentucky was doing, and it might have happened. I might have not just have seen it. Um, but it's 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 cliche. You never want to lose, but darn it, 
I'd much rather have lost that game than lose second second round in the SEC tournament, which I would still take a second round loss in the SEC for a Final Four Elite Eight run. Don't get don't get me wrong, but obviously Dude, I'll tell you this: was, I would have, I would have been, I think I would have been a little bit more upset if we had lost to Alabama and then beat Kentucky. Because yeah. I felt like Alabama was the game where you're like you're solidifying yourself and you fall on your face. Okay, I, I, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, I feel you. I, I totally yeah. feel you. It's like okay. here's your chance to win the SEC. Right. Step up. Do what you need to do. Take care of your business. Like if you if you fall at that, that's where it's like, oh, sh- this no faith, none whatsoever. I, I have no idea what you're gonna do. In the SC tournament, in the NCAA tournament, no, I I don't know. Yeah, but and even that Alabama even, win makes me feel a lot better. Yeah, and the thing is, even though Kentucky was at home, you don't want to lose at home. I I still get what what you mean of hey, the build up, we, they got to play in a hostile environment. It is for the SEC championship regular season, so I feel you. I I, I can totally get that, and I think yeah, um, yeah I probably would have been. More frustrated too, losing at Bama than than Kentucky. I just think Kentucky's the better team. So when they're also shooting really well and we're not hitting our shots like we need to, it's an easier explanation or understanding of okay, I get why we took that L. Going to going to the tournament, man. Actually, last thing, awesome. It was it was it was cool. I I love Triple J. I love Santi. So great, great careers. I uh, hope they most importantly can really finish strong. Uh, I wish yes. they would have maybe had a better senior day, but it's been great having those guys on on the team, even when I get slightly frustrated with them. Mm-hmm. Um, Dalton said he wished he had more years here. Dalton, we do too, Dalton. We do, <laughs> yeah, too. We do too, bud. Yeah. So, anyway, hey, right out of high school, buddy. <laughs> All right, so Tennessee's the one seed. Uh, Our first game is Friday at noon. Um, I do have a meeting at around 1030 on Friday, and after that your boy will be trucking home to get in front of a TV. But anyway, so we'll play Mississippi State or LSU, Uh, and then after that we would play the winner of either Vandy, Arkansas, South Carolina, or Auburn. Auburn. The other side of the bracket, the two seed is Kentucky. The three seed is Alabama. Uh, Kyler, for me, out of those three teams, I I just want Tennessee to make it to the championship game. Obviously, I'd love for us to win it. Okay. Uh, if we get to the SEC championship game and play well, but the other team like, shoots better, plays better, like, okay, I can understand that. If we lose in the semifinals, like on Saturday, that'd be pretty annoying. Um, I would say I'm probably most worried. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a Bruce Pearl effect. I don't know why, but Auburn scares me. And <laughs> and I even though even though even though Kentucky just beat us, and they shot lights out, and Coach Cal's got them playing at the right time i don't know why maybe this is just dumb but i maybe would rather play kentucky than alabama again even though we've beaten bama twice i don't know i don't i don't know i guess i'm gonna let you I, talk this out <laughs> what do you think what do you think what do you think no i i mean i wrote down what you said playing bruce is worrisome i i've watched it i've seen it i, I i've watched him win games he's not supposed to, beat up on people. And Albert, like he's just a really good freaking coach, dude. It's like I could easily see us losing to Auburn. Like that can definitely happen. Um, I almost feel better about playing in Alabama than I do Auburn. Like if Alabama was the four, I would feel better on our yeah, side to uh, make it further. Sure. Okay. Um and I don't, and I don't think that is because we've beaten Alabama twice this year. Like I really think it's just because the Bruce effect, and who, like I think I think they're very similar teams, and then Bruce bumps Auburn up a notch. Um, but the team I do not want to play is Kentucky. 
Okay. I do. I I don't want to play them because there's not much of a recipe for hot hot shooters, and that's what they are. That I mean, buddies were averaging a hundred points a game over like the past month. So like it was a good job by our team to hold them in the eighties. Uh so it, Kentucky's the one team I don't want to play. Like I'm I am rooting for Bama to beat them. So I think yeah, I think Bama worries me because they do take so many threes um and more people on their team. They've got three, four, five dudes that'll let them let those things fly. I felt like Kentucky mm-hmm. was more of a two man show. So mm-hmm. it worries me in that a little bit, but you're right. Kentucky is the better basketball team. I mean, they played Alabama a couple weeks ago and they throttled them. I think it was yeah. like 111 to like 90 one time when I looked at it. So, so Kentucky, and I know that was just one game, but I, I definitely think Kentucky's the better team than them, but I don't know why that is about Alabama having more shooters that I'm worried about, like the whole team getting hot compared to, I'm like, if we play Kentucky, I was like, okay, well, let's stop Reed Shepard or the other guy if that makes sense, just kind of numbers game, but but it's still like Alabama. I think, I think, you know what it is? I think it's because Alabama is such like one shot concentrated. Like it's like all they do is threes. It's like if you're playing a team in football that all they do is run the ball. It's like, okay, well I know what they're going to do. Like eventually everyone figured out the wildcat. Like Miami was good with it for a couple months, but then everybody goes, "Hey, they're gonna run it. Like, load the box. We got this." In Alabama's case, I think that is kind of like, "Hey, they're gonna shoot threes. That is what they're doing." Where Kentucky has the athleticism of their guards to really drive and make good sure. baskets. I mean, sure. strong baskets, um, and they got a big dude down low too. Like. That sure. was giving Adu some some issues. So that, like you said, they are a better team overall, which is why they worry me the most out of the tournament. And I think people are going to, in their like March Madness brackets, pick Kentucky as a team that can be a five seed, make it to the Final Four. Like they, like yeah. that is one of those teams. That people are going to be like, oh yeah, this is my dark horse to 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 make it far. So I, I, don't, I, I you know, I think I, that's I, I would much rather play Bama. I don't disagree. Yeah, I think you probably talked me into it. Let's just you yeah. know what the yeah. ultimately ultimately to finish it up. Tennessee, if Tennessee just plays their game, play defense, hit your shots. Um, you don't have to be shooting lights out. I mean, that'd be great if you do, because if you do, then you're probably going to win pretty easily. But give Dalton some support. Do not do not get in the stand around watching Dalton. You can't do that. Other guys have to be willing to step up, take shots, make plays. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, t- it's cool. It is cool when your team is the best team and you say, if we handle business, we'll be Gucci. So that that's a good yeah. feeling. Two, two more things on my end. One – I think this SEC tournament run and the NCAA tournament is such a huge spot for ADU. I think there's going to be so much opportunity for him to become a like household guy, take over when he needs to do things for us to win the game. I think with Dalton being offensive player of the year, everyone's looking at him like he's up. I mean, he's up for national player of the year. Like when a team that doesn't play us twice a year, not in the SEC gets to, Hey, we're playing Tennessee. What the hell does a coach say? First, we got to stop Dalton. We got to stop Dalton. We got to stop Dalton. They're going to be locked in on him. And I think it gives a do the opportunity to be like, Hey, you got one guy guarding you. You're not getting double teamed. No one's coming over to help. You, they put one dude on you. Can you win your one-on-one matchup? Like, I, I see it the same way I see football. Can you win your one-on-one matchup? And I think with Dalton being the player he is, it gives Adu more opportunities to have one-on-ones. 
So it's like I I'm I'm watching A do moving forward as like you have a one on one, you have that opportunity to go up and make a tough basket, maybe get an and one, make your free throws, please. And you know, if I was him, I would just be, I mean, 10 feet from the basket and just back and forth, just shooting, 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 shooting as much as I possibly could. Um and, and then I hope you're right. I mean, if you agree, like I, I just, no, I'm no, just, completely. I'm trying like to look into the future, him. and I'm like, Adu, there's such an opportunity for him to step up. I like his game, I really, really do, and I, and I'm totally, totally fine with him taking that little 10, 12, 15 foot bunny. Really, if he pulls it, I'm like, I'm good with it. And the other yeah. thing is too, I love when I love when we when we drive and dish to him. I really, really do, and I, yeah. I love that in general. Often, I, I mean, I've said it all the time. If there's you know, I, I lose my mind in basketball when a team's down one or down even two and some guy dribbles for 15 seconds, chucks up a three, get to the rack, and when you get in, when you beat your guy and you drive in and the big man steps up on you, hand it right off to him. If he doesn't step right up on you, you get your layup or get fouled. Right. So, no, so I, I think Adu could be – yeah, I agree. I think that could be big, big, big time. Um, in closing – I wanted to bring this up to you and kind of just like get your thoughts on it. I know you haven't been the biggest Rick Barnes fan, right? And we kind of sit here and go, and I think everyone across the nation goes, Rick Barnes can't get over the hump. He can't do the thing in March. He's a good coach. He can coach up good teams over the regular season, but – Postseason, he falls short. I'm looking at what we have right now, and this is when I was going to bring up the awards. You have the Offensive Player of the Year in the SEC, the Defensive <laughs> Player of the Year in the SEC. You win the SEC regular season championship. You have a player up for National Player of the Year. Um if he wins the SEC tournament, is it even worse for him if he were to lose in the NCAA tournament? Because I think it is. I think if you come into the NCAA tournament, SEC regular season winner, SEC tournament winner, offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year, national player of the year, and you lose in the second round of the NCAA, it ain't good. It ain't good, Ricky B. It ain't good, dude. Like, what else do you need to make this happen? I hear you. And I and I, I feel it. I feel what you're saying. But <laughs> that I that think- worries me. Like, I'm rooting for this team to win the SEC. I'm just like, oh my gosh, dude. Like if we win the SEC tournament and he loses in the second round, the whole offseason, people are going to be like, do we want Rick Barnes? Do we? Well, first off, yeah, first off, I'm not worried about that because he's not going anywhere. Even if we want him gone, he's not going to go anywhere until he retires. I just don't see Danny White getting rid of him. And realistically, how can you get rid of a guy that does do this every year, whether it's not what you and I want? Maybe I've come to my senses. You hope somebody bit. else takes him from you like Texas did when we took him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i don't oh man oh i uh i don't even want to think about march madness tournament but i think I'll still be, <laughs> i think i'll still go into it watching it like hey man you know what's a really good chance of happening I, I will say this kyler i think there has to be some context to it i think depending on how stuff happens you know yeah. if 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 the guys are missing open shots if they're turning the ball over if they're doing whatever ultimately it is the coach is responsible. I got gotcha. you. His responsibility. And ultimately, it will still be another, oh, Rick Barnes had a really good team going into March. They choked in the in the uh, tournament. But I'm going to watch it with my eyes. I'll have some context clues. That's how I feel about it. But I see <laughs> I see the, pe- the picture you're painting. Yeah, I was just like, uh-oh. Like, I saw that they got the awards, and I'm like, 
Oh, so we have the best offensive player and best defensive player in the SEC? Oh, then shouldn't we win? This is not <laughs> going to be good if we lose. This is not going to be good. It's like, imagine if we are in football and you had the SEC player of the year on offense and defense. Could happen. It, it, yeah. And then you're just like, didn't do anything in the postseason. <laughs> like, not a thing. Nico and uh, Nico and James Pierce say, "Hey, Kyler, we'll, we'll take, we'll take, we'll take, a, we'll take a number." Yeah, yeah, no kidding. We're up next, Nico and James. Yeah. All right, brother. We'll see what happens. All right, buddy. Talk soon. See ya. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. If you are watching, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment. If you're just listening, rate and review, download and re-download and follow us on all those listening platforms you may use. Uh, also follow us on social media at Pancakes and Bacon for our main account on Twitter at Pancakes and Bacon underscore RTI on Instagram. Uh, if you want to follow Reed, it's just at rbacon26 on Twitter. And then for myself, it's just at Kyler Kerberson on all social media. So check me out. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for being fantastic fans. Uh, very excited for this SEC tournament. Let's hope the boys can can bring it home, get Dalton his ring. Um, but as always, go Vols.